My name is Akio Sakiodoa. Hey guys, this is Anto Lecky. My name is Leo Bliss. My name is Akavago by the name Baba D. And you're tuned into Rapid TV. And I love Rapid TV. Shout out to Rapid TV. Thank you, Rapid TV. Please keep watching Rapid TV. This is Rapid TV. Rapid. Rapid TV. Keep watching. Keep it. 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 Chile Kupu Obugu Kedu Kana. I am a Trogo Mamma. The Bendan Garanga Mugua Obundesila Rapid Television. I bear with Kamano Lab on Paretoka. Kamano Lab on Pai from Basaro Melala. But I see Chile Kupu and Chile Biavia Lejuana. Nam Shabian Gamadia Bulem, young girl Lampu Guapla Lazo. O Bodjila in the Janabata. Okanoje, Lanan injured Luan, Luan Nani, Okanada injured the Nabata. Okanoje, I need Janabata behind. And my sheet chili cuckoo. Ah, Yaru. Men of Jagawa told you, Tatama. I get told you, Tatu do, sir. I get told you, Tato Gali, Oh, get her at your state, ma. Oh, get her Nigeria, ma. La Hankema. Lankopara. Lankemonso. Good morning, this is Eastern Circle on Rapid TV, reaching you live from our studio here in Umaha, the capital of Abia, God's own state. It's a Wednesday morning, a beautiful morning at that, and we're here to bring you updates from recent happenings from this part of the world. My name is Adeze Iwim, and Michael Demena is here. When you come at <laughs> step <laughs> on, <laughs> when you come at actually meet an elder, so uh, well, it's not it's not it's not wrong okay. if I refer to in you that, as that. Yeah, yet. No, I, I think that kind of makes me feel old, and you know, uh, I do them that side. Also, so do be that let's, side. Let's not talk about that. I, but but all the same, I, I I appreciate you for recognizing that I am you know. But we'll talk about that later. Good morning and welcome Mom, to Eastern Circle. You. <laughs> you have to look at me. My name is, my name is Michael Odem and, I, and I welcome you especially to today's edition of the show. It's a beautiful day, a very beautiful day, of course, to be in the land of the living. Welcome. And uh, today, Weird Wednesday. What other ways to start Weird Wednesdays than to actually uh, talk about the situation of uh, baby factory that has continued to fester. So that will be the first thing we we'll talk about this morning uh, as uh, another set of, uh, another new, new, new uh, baby factory have has been discovered here in the city of uh, Omaha and as well we talk about something that uh, really happened recently in Ebony State uh, with farmers and uh, it's something that we've talked about quite a while as well the wife of Ebony State governor has stressed the importance of recognizing and empowering women as agents of change to a sustainable agricultural means of fighting hunger and poverty yeah uh, we had a similar situation here in Abia State with one of the lawmakers. We'll talk about that shortly. But keep it locked. We get into the meat of the matter shortly after the break. Don't go away. Welcome back. This is still Eastern Circle and Straight Story, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, says its operatives have rescued 10 victims, including six pregnant girls from a baby factory in Abia State. In a statement by the Director General of NAPTIP, Fatima Waziri Azi, the factory is located at Umunkwa village in the Umafai Ndume Ibeku area of Umaha North, local government area of the state. 
She said the agency also arrested a 63-year-old woman operating the BB factory, adding that the suspect and the victims have been handed over to the NAPTIP office in Abia for further investigation and prosecution. According to the report, a lactating mother and two boys who are minors are among those rescued from the baby factory. Interestingly, uh, this is another situation, <coughs> one too many, of course. I mean, in this country, we, we, we cannot, uh, it seems like we, we're not getting away from this zone anytime soon because in all parts of the country, actually, we have this issue of baby factory and it's just increasing by the day. So no matter how NAPTIP fights, it's like they keep fighting back and then they they have their ways of ex existing uh, covertly as well. And then we only get to talk about the ones we are, that we're able to uh, identify, right? A lot of them are really existing. Even maybe in that compound where you're living, you never can tell what's There's happening something. in one of the rooms or one of the flats. So it's that bad. I, I think the um, Women Affairs and yeah. the NAPTIP should probably... Um, collaborate mm. because most of um, the girls you see as victims yeah. are actually girls who are uh, victims of unwanted pregnancy yeah. so if they are able to collaborate and make it in a way that these girls when they get pregnant sometimes when they are pregnant they are being sent out from their homes by mm. their parents and they are able to become a victim to these um, homes because they come up with a lot of promises and things for them probably they will take care of the the girl mm. until she gives birth take care of a baby and all that definitely you wouldn't know what their their motives are then if they're able to come up with plans where yeah. these girls can call in and probably they're taken care of until they give birth we know that most times when they give birth to these children they're not able to take care of them you can also make out an arrangement where the government can actually take this child from them keep contact with the mothers and keep the baby probably in, a, in an orphanage and take care of them. And if for any reason there is someone who are in their need of babies, they can go ahead with the documentation and have access to the street and take care of them than them getting into the, the, the hands of these people um, running these um, baby factories. Yeah, uh, also, I think you, you, you have a point there. But what I would like to also say is that uh, as a government, we need to see this as a... Uh, 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 a very serious situation. In fact, a, a state of emergency kind of situation because we we notice how we've been having issues of kidnapping or maybe transporters disappearing with children and then we'll talk about baby factories. There, there is some sort of link somewhere because there are people, there's a market, there's a market, a very booming market for, for children. African. So that is why we would have things like this happen. happen. Because there are people patronizing them. They will keep, you know, doing this. And one of the reasons is that the way society actually, um, how do I put it now, um, uh, stigmatizes uh, women and barrenness. I don't even like using the word barrenness. So because it's as if there's there's this fight, there is this struggle. You must you must have, have a, a child, child somehow. You want to prove to the society, you want to prove to your family, your in-laws, and all of that that you can actually have a child. So. People go extra miles. They either Actually. they either swapping babies at the hospital. They are either paying nurses to see babies. They are you know, quite a whole lot of things. Now, to maybe those that feel like okay, eh, why not? It's easier. Maybe even uh, you are helping people who have. I think if there is actually a, le a very legal way to yeah. adopt babies, you wouldn't want to go and patronize those that are hiding. But that tomorrow things like this can come up and mm. you get arrested in the process because as a people we like to cut corners because there are orphanages all over the places right and that is why we have those places you can go there legally adopt a baby so why would you want to go through this route because you want to avoid paperwork you want to avoid maybe the extra pays you buy these ones now because they are they are trying to look for a way to just get by and get away with the with the child that they do not want so they might it might not cost you much to get it so a whole lot is considered in this and that's where the criminality comes in because this is humans we are talking about it's a human we're talking about human beings and then we we also need to see how much of decadence we have in the society because a lot is contributing to this the economic situation for instance people no longer have value for the children they, they give have. birth to on their own they just want to have the daily bread so whatever it's going to take even if it means you know, 
just some can't even selling get, our, selling get the daily yeah. bread for their children they give birth to these kids and mm. release them into the streets to go fend for themselves and in doing that mm. they get these unwanted pregnancies exactly and sometimes they feel like okay in order to run away from all of that they could just you know get pregnant uh, you stay in a home where they have food morning at least uh, even if it's once a day they get to eat or something they stay there and when they give birth the baby is taken away from them and some amount of money is given to them and everyone is happy so but we we have to look beyond this and then really tackle the situation head on all right we have the government looking into different sectors e education for instance very important health very this is another aspect of health that we should be looked into, into. the people the, the, i mean the government should do more. These agencies who are actually, uh, I commend them for the efforts that they are putting in. Actually, I can see that recent, in recent times, the both uh, Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development, the NAPTIP, they are actually proactive. So we need to see more of this, identify, and then again, comes to the human beings, the people in the society. We have to be our neighbors, our brothers keepers. You'll be able to, you know, say something when you see something don't go about saying oh it's not my business i don't even know who those people are i mean so whatever is going on there doesn't concern me if you see a place where such thing is happening if you even have the slightest idea you can try to report i agree with you and another thing is now mm. this woman this 63 year old woman has been arrested yeah. and what next now we should be able to follow up the story and mm. know what happens to her what punishment is she getting for this yeah, for the act. act yeah and it serves as a deterrent for others which i'm not sure would even deter them but at least to an extent it will because we've spoken about this over and over, over, and over on yeah. this show and mm. it keeps coming up which is not actually good it's not it's Definitely. endangering the lives of these mm. girls and there were two boys found in that home probably yeah. they're waiting for their buyers exactly. to come and it's, not, it's, not it's a crazy. Nice Trafficking in persons is a very serious offense and it's very punishable under the law. So we, we want to see a situation where people who get involved in these things uh, get uh, get really the punishment due to them, sure. and then uh, every other person would learn lessons from that. So we will actually keep up keep you updated with the development from that story as it unfolds eventually. And uh, we'll move on to what next we have for you, and that will be a story from Ebony State. The wife of the governor of Ebony State has stressed the importance of recognizing and empowering women as agents of change to a sustainable agricultural means of fighting hunger and uh, poverty. The, in the involvement of women in an inter is an integral part of agriculture according to, the, to, to uh, Mrs. Mary Madeline Wifru, contributing significantly to food production and farming activities around the world has been, has been overlooked and undervalued which is why she is speaking on the need for society to see women as key agents of change in the agricultural sector now uh, during this event uh, uh, quite a uh, quite a sight agricultural uh implement tools and produce, uh, produce and uh, um, seedlings we are presented to the women uh and you know a whole lot of other things i could i could see happening during that event and then brings us back home to the issue of farming as we have uh, talked about most of the time farming in this country has you know it has been like a mainstay for for uh, for decades now so but then again just like we had a situation here in Abia, one of the lawmakers did almost the same thing you know call your constituents and then you present them with uh, yam seedlings uh, cassava stems you know all of that and after that, then what next? Now, this is a bony state, for instance. I, 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 it's, when things like this happen, sort of, it makes me think, really. A bony state has potentials, like serious potentials, to solve uh, a lot of the agricultural or food problems we have in the country. All right? For instance, rice farming is booming there. And even recently, they, they have a booming uh, fertilizer production factory that uh, within the space of six months or thereabouts, as a report came this year, garnered about 200 million naira for the state. So <clears throat> it's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot to talk about. Which, wh why, I'm, why I'm saying this particularly is that, for instance, the government should, I mean, this is the wife of the governor. You can partner with the state government. You can do a lot. All right? It, the awareness we know, it's not like we don't know. We know that 
farming because what one of the things said here is that uh, the issue is that farming has been more subsistence in, uh, in in places like that which is normal people just uh, farm for them or to have them. food so if they have such potentials how about government empower them okay. how what happened to mechanize agriculture for farming. Christ's sake yes. all right and it's not just the women that should get involved in farming everybody young and old should get involved because we're not True. we're not talking yeah. about feeding for the mouth we're yeah. talking about being able to export this um, mm. farm produce being able to sell it to make mm. more money so it's not yes for me it has always been the women and the farm michael True. big uh, if the thing is women especially older women there, there is this there, there is some kind of um um uh insights they have in terms of farming that a lot of other people don't, don't. have i'm talking about identifying seedlings that are that are actually good, good without just having to look at them like they, they have this agricultural Switch insight on yes, yeah once work. they look at the material once they look at the tools they can tell those days i used to be fascinated when i go to, with my mom to the farm and then she's sorting uh, the the seedlings and everything i'm like well, what How is wrong with this one this? now and i because I, I can't tell but she knows these women know they could tell so they have that idea so imagine when you, with such insight and then you you add with add mechanization matter. to that all right so the people who can control the mecha the, the machines Machine. work hand in glove with these women who actually have the idea since you want the women to be involved and that will be boom for everyone so at the end of the day we are not just farming to feed our, feed families, our families and to keep food up. but then we can export across the state and across the uh, across the country as well and then beyond as well that's 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 it so we should consider mechanized farming produce these mm. machines and boom we all have food. I, we won't I just, have to, to, I, just, to, to I, I i i envy people in a boy mm. state because food is not as costly as it is here over there so imagine when we do more of the farming so what you it, see so it, the, it, it the will be potential like. is there it just because i it, i feel somehow when i see governments do something like this we have gone beyond maybe if it, if it's maybe some philanthropist or maybe a, a member of the community that says oh okay let me help the people in my community the women to be able to do farming and they feed the family I, I i wouldn't have a problem with this but if this is coming from the government i want to see greater initiative i want to see something that is not just um short-sighted something that is more holistic Something that addresses the key agricultural problems, problems that we have in the country Definitely. as a people. Yes. That's my point exactly. Provide the people with the seedling, give them machines, fertilizers, post planting activities, things they need to harvest and all that. And, and we'll have all we need. At least we'll not be looking for food to eat. We'll have for that state, for instance, if, if the, the fertilizer factory is booming, and the farming system is booming it's a win-win they don't you don't need to go far you can you have all the of fertilizer this exactly to apply you to boost the crops. fertilizer comp factory you boost mechanization of agriculture and what happens as a result will be food everywhere surplus to eat and export now it's in the hands of the government okay. the state government <laughs> and really not forward. just the boeing state yeah. I, I think I mean, every other every state other, in the every south other state in the country follow suit and try to make food available for everybody because definitely if we have food mm. Oh, that's because reduce the number we of know that we some have. states have different things that they are known for maybe that the lands can carry i mean for instance maybe rice maybe other states have other there are parts of the north where they good yam too okay so there are other places where more, some other types of agricultural produce will boom more than the others so this it's it takes it takes the government to study do this research what do we need to put in this Test state what do we put in this exactly work and then push the, the the budget for agriculture for food production and all of that because we keep hearing rice pyramid we have rice pyramid mm -hmm. we have 10 metric tons of greens <laughs> and we're not seeing anything we are still having food shortages and all of that so we need to do more exactly we, we need really to, need to do more we need to do more and you don't just have to wait till you have acres of land to do farming like michael will always say go to your backyard and do <laughs> something there if you don't have a space you can oh use bags you can yeah. use plastic buckets or cans open it up pour sand in there you can just start with just the vegetables that you need for your meals and i think yeah that's Bef the size before we go actually I, something interesting like you know, uh, some some news gladdens my heart. All right. So recently, you know, uh, the eastern the eastern children have been on the on the limelight in recent time for achievements and all of that. And that type of thing has happened again, where we have the children from the easterners making us proud uh, nationally and even globally. 
All right, so uh, it, it's it's beautiful to know that recently a child has been trending, an Igbo girl has been trending for making a hundred percent in in mathematics competition, and it's 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 a beautiful news any any time any day. It's a beautiful news. You mentioned it yesterday and say when you invest mm. in the education sector, you will. It's not something that is hidden. You will see the results, and that yeah. said because. Who, whichever school that um, child is in, they must have done a lot of training and work for that child to stand out. Mm. I heard about the competition that should be STEM, and I think she has um, is it a scholarship. Yeah, she's worth she, twenty something million, million. scholarship. And just just yes, look at that. It's beautiful, and it's it's that's the encouragement that we need. We when we celebrate things like this. When we celebrate academic excellence, all right, even in the midst of the mass failure we had in Jam this year. <laughs> so, if, if these are kind of cherry news that will actually tell you that, yes, there is hope. So, uh, from home, this is still a, 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 a child, right? So, if we could retain this, at least if we could encourage her to keep up with this, uh, there won't be any need to, you know, go out there and then become something else, right? So it's, it's, it's important that we put all of this into, into consideration. Even uh, a, a, another thing would be the fact that uh, a, another set of children from Anambra State. <laughs> Anambra won, is really doing well. Yeah, won uh, really won well. six gold medals all right, in a recent uh, competition. It's mathematics again. And I'm not surprised because, of course, we know Chikobi. <laughs> he's an he's an he's an Igbo man as what well. Are you the, very, to, the very first man, all right. Who 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 did it with mathematics? That time you ask you are so, you are you Chikobi? Well, <laughs> yes. I mean that phrase cannot die as far as Nigeria is concerned. As far as Sadly. mathematics is concerned, that phrase are you Chikobi or referring someone to Chikobi can because it's it's something that we know that exists. So I'm not surprised when. Igbo people, uh, Igbo children, like so it's in our blood actually, so I'm super proud of this I, I don't think it's just <laughs> in Anambra State that will have this happening, yeah. I, I've seen a lot of pictures, I think it was just a general mathematics competition going on at different mm, okay. um, locations, I've seen children from Abia State, there's a school okay. here, Meth Academy, mm. I've seen results of the, um, the school post um, results on social mm. media where their children excelled in math competition. So it's a general thing. We Igbos, we are smart and we are very intelligent. Now and you I get my point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I think I can close now. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, we've had a good run on the uh, show today. All right, definitely. that's the size of our package today on Eastern Circle. We'll take you back to our Bulger Studios for the rest of Rapid Down. See you tomorrow for our cultural diary. Definitely. We'll have something for you. Definitely. Bye for now. Have Bye. yourself a beautiful Wednesday. Not a weird one. <laughs> <laughs>